Hey folks, it's Kimberly Bates here with the Evaluator Group back for Video Insights. And I've got two folks joining me today. Um, Bruce Kornfeld, who is the Chief Marketing and Product Officer at Store Magic. Welcome from Austin. You wanna say hi? Thanks, Kimberly. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Great. And Dave Raffo, who you guys know, um, he's one of our senior analysts here and he's uh, covering, just in case you didn't know this, HCI, containers, software-defined storage, a whole lot of things. Um, it's hard to contain him in anything, though, because you, you know him so well from where he's been writing. Okay, so what we're talking about today is when you are talking containers yet again, you're going to hear an awful lot from this because it is a top topic with our folks, our IT end users, um, on a lot of different areas. So first thing, Dave, you recently hosted a session with our visionaries. And for those watching that aren't familiar with visionaries, these are a select group of IT end users that get together and talk on current topics anonymously so they're straight and open and <laughs> getting a little brutal kind of feedback sometimes this time you talked storage and containers what were the themes that came out of that session yeah so first you know it varied as far as how deep uh, container use is in their organization some had developers were using them you know quite frequently others they were just getting involved or, or looking at it but um you know, nobody really expected the uh, containers to not take off. And they're all, you know, they all expect that their DevOps teams will get deeper into them. So I think the, the big concern among the IT ops people were that they're, they don't really have visibility into it. The, the developers are using them and they're doing their thing and the IT people and the infrastructure people um, are not really involved and, and they're a little concerned about the, uh, the communication between them and the developers. So, um, you know, in some ways it's not that much different than, you know, somebody on the call mentioned like um, Exadata with Oracle users where the Oracle DBAs do their own storage. And of course the hyper-converged uh, infrastructure systems are used mainly by the um, virtual server admins and not the, you know, the storage teams. But, um, you know, the concern is there should be more communication. They want the DevOps people to understand, the, you know, the st enterprise storage features, why data has to be backed up and protected, why it has to meet, uh, you know, internal and government regulations. And, you know, they're, they're all trying to, to get together and, and open those lines of communication so everybody's on the same page. Yeah, and it's kind of like any new technology that seems to show up. It shows up in all the different areas, and all of a sudden IT ops is saying, okay, we got to support this thing. So let me shift over to a bit of um, where Bruce, Bruce lives. And Bruce lives a lot on the edges, both personally and professionally. On the edge, baby. <laughs> Living on the edge. <laughs> Living on the edge. Okay, and Bruce, your company deals with a lot with edge deployments. You do a massive amount of work with retail operations. I won't say your customers or anything, but... You're just now seeing them talk about containers. Now, these are old line brick and mortar kind of folks. And they've had very established things where we all go pick up our hammers and chisels and nails and paint, right? right. Um, and, um, but, you know, they have to be, they're managed all the way back at the data center. And some of them are actually using cloud stuff. So, but what does this mean for IT op organizations? What are you guys seeing in, in these edge systems? Yeah, so like you said, Kimberly, uh, store magic is all about, we've been doing this for many, many years, it's all about simplifying storage and security for the edge, and that's, and that's where we live. Uh, our customers are edge, and yeah, they're, they're brick and mortar. Um, they're not, they're typically not uh, large scalable cloud solutions or large data center solutions. These are either mom and pop SMBs that have a couple of sites, maybe a couple of stores, they can be large retailers with five, 6,000 sites and anywhere in between. Um, so we have a lot of experience doing this. And over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, what's dominant out there is VMware and virtualization. And, that, and that's the way, as everyone knows, that that's the way IT has been basically running for the last decade or so, which is, okay, we need to build some infrastructure at the edge. Um, it needs to be really, really simple. It needs to be really inexpensive and that and that's where we've been focused but the way they've been doing it is with virtualization and vms because from an it ops perspective they can develop an application and it can run anywhere it doesn't matter it can run on physical hardware it can run as a vm and that and that's been the way it's been 
so to answer your question around containers, yeah, we're starting, we're starting to get that feedback from our customers that it's coming. Some of our customers are using containers already. A lot of them are testing and getting ready for it because they know that new age development process is, a, is around containers. Not, not all the time, but a lot of the times. So these low cost, easy to use environments at the edge need to be ready for containers. And that's, and that's what we're focused on is trying to get that, get that ready for our edge customers. Yeah, especially as we do, as we're seeing the operations where the developers start to work on these quote unquote digital transformations, which are consumer facing or end user facing digital apps um, that become, are becoming very, very popular and seemingly the best way to develop these is in a rapid form. And, and that's with containers. So with that, um, I'd like to think that this is a very fast moving train that's gonna run over VMware, I'm sorry. <laughs> VMware, I apologize on that, but that's not true. That's just not going to happen. Gonna um, at least that we think it's going to be, a, we see a slower migration process. So Dave, what does that mean for the IT organization? What, what's the impact there? Well, it's funny you mentioned that and Bruce mentioned that because a couple of our visionaries did mention that, you know, they were, they're considering Tanzu the, the way to, to go early on. They, you know, they're looking, they're evaluating it and seeing it as a way to bridge the transition and, uh, you know, it definitely is a transition where people are going to have to deal with both VMs and containers um, sometimes simultaneously. Uh, but you know, on you know, on the same system. But it's it is a kind of a slow moving train. You know, I mean, we, the evaluator group we recently did a survey where uh, you know, 18% of the respondents of IT end users said they've deployed most or all workloads and containers. 29% more said that there was their goal to move most of all workloads to containers, which brings it to about half who have either done it already or are trying to do it. But, um, you know, 34%, one third said that they're going to run a mix of containers and traditional workloads for the foreseeable future. So, uh, and only 20% said they had no, no intention or were not ready to do it yet. So, so, you know, it, it's pretty split about among the, how many people are there and people are going and the way people are going to get there is to run both um, together simultaneously for a while. And that means a kind of a heavier weight on systems that are at the edge, right, Bruce? Yeah, I was, I was just going to jump in there and just kind of follow on to what Dave's saying. <clears throat> um, if you think about it, the data that I think Dave is putting out there in terms of the surveys, that's, that's in general, and that's customers from the edge to data center and cloud. But if you really think about it, if you're running a large data center and the developers want to develop on containers, you can build an infrastructure to run natively with containers. It can be done. Um, you can buy a, just to make fun a little bit, you can buy a billion dollar EMC storage system millions of dollars, whatever it costs, because you have people there. It's a data center. You've got infrastructure, right? So you can figure out how to build a storage infrastructure to support native containers because it's right there and it's manageable. But take that out to the edge and it's a whole it's a whole nother world, right? There's there's no IT support. There's, there, there's lack of physical security. There's, there's a lot of issues at the edge that need to be handled carefully. So, um, you know, it's no different from what Dave was saying is we're seeing our customers say we want to deploy containers, but that has to be with with VMs. We're not ready to go full on containers without because we've built we've built they've built the management framework around VMware um, you know, over the years. So they're not ready to just rip that out and build all new processes around the world. So what we're seeing in our um, our CSI driver that we have. Um, um, what we're focused on is being able to tell customers, hey, keep doing what you're doing with VMs and all your management infrastructure, but when IT wants to deploy a new app at the edge, run it with our CSI driver to give you that persistent, highly available storage, but do it with virtual machines inside a virtual machine or uh, using Tanzu that it can go side by side with the VM, but at least the management infrastructure doesn't change, but you can still start to deploy containers today. Yeah. So given the adoption cycle and the pressures that are on IT ops, um, what are some of the technical issues, maybe one or two things that they should be aware of, Dave? Well, you know, there's, first of all, the way that storage is managed, provisioned, uh, is different in containers and Kubernetes 
than it is in traditional systems. Uh, you know, the developers are using things like, uh, you know, persistent volumes, persistent volume claims, dynamic volumes where you pre-populate uh, your storage volumes. You know, on demand, you don't you don't wait to uh, to have somebody say, "I need X amount of storage." Uh, you build storage classes where this is all done ahead of time, and you just you know make a call to a storage class. You know, monitoring management tools are, are different than you would get with traditional storage, and I think people need to understand that. Also, you know, what you can and can't do with CSI drivers, you know, it's different in different systems, how, how, uh, how deeply the integration is. So, um, you know, just like, uh, you know, I was saying earlier, the, the DevOps teams need to understand, uh, you know, features that you might need for enterprise storage. I think the, the IT ops people need to understand, you know, what the process and, and how you go about managing storage in Kubernetes and containers are. You know, yeah. different processes. Yeah. So one last question, Bruce, for you. Um, one piece of advice for IT and their deployments at the edge. Um, yeah, so I would say, I wanted to go with two, Kimberly, but maybe one. You all right. go two. So, so, that's all right. No, <laughs> um, no I would say um, that I would say that deploying containers or VMs at the edge doesn't have to be expensive. And I think a lot of, there's a lot of perception out there that mm -hmm. containers is a fairly new technology. You have to figure out how to integrate with Kubernetes and how do you manage and provision and all that. But the way that we've architected it, it's such that it literally is a two node solution. And um, most people that think of Kubernetes, they think, oh, well, it's gotta be three nodes minimum. And most edge hyperconverged systems are three nodes as well. Um, in the store magic world, we've been able to architect this to be two nodes only. And the way we do that is there's two physical nodes per site. Um, we do the quorum through a remote witness that can manage up to a thousand sites. And that's, that's one of the pieces of secret sauce that we have. So, and we've architected our CSI driver, our, our container storage interface driver to work with SVSAN and Kubernetes to make sure we can provision storage up the containers. And we've done it still with only two nodes. And the way that works is it's a, it's, it's a highly available cluster that we create on this hyper-converged two nodes and the customer then would run three um, Kubernetes nodes on those two in a virtual way. So yes, yeah, so we figured out how to make a two node solution work. It doesn't have to be super expensive. Um, so as the IT folks are doing planning for the edge, they don't have to think, oh man, it's really, really expensive. All of this can be purchased per site for about $10,000, including all the hardware that you need. We're a software company, obviously, but two servers, a bunch of software, store magic stuff, 10 grand per site. It's a pretty reasonable deployment. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate you in talking about where store magic is. Anything else that you want to say, Dave? No, I just, you know, what Bruce was saying, I agree. You know, when you have, uh, you know, retail companies where they might have four or 5,000 edge sites and they have devices on all of them, you know, you need everything built in, you know, it has to be easy mm -hmm. to install. You know, you have to have your monitoring, diagnostics, analytics, security, high availability, everything has to be built into these, um, you know, two or three and, and as Bruce was talking, just two node devices. So, uh, you know, it changes, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, two or three robo sites where a company could, could manage them remotely yeah. from the data center. Yeah, okay. There Thanks, we have Kimberly. it, guys. Have a great one. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks very Thank much. You.